Okay, I'm Cody Straith. I am a rookie in the 2016 Iditarod. I'm also a sled builder. I build uh, dog sleds for other racers that race in the Iditarod and the Yukon Quest. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about sled design and the sleds that we use for those races. Uh, I'm here in Whitehorse who just finished the, the another thousand mile race, the Yukon Quest. Um, and this is the sled that I just used in that race. Um, some of the main components of a race sled, of course, or any dog sled for that matter, are the runners and the runners are there kind of like as a ski. They're what the sled slides on. Um, everything sits on that and slides on the snow. That is the main part of your dog sled. Um, another main part of your dog sled are what we call stanchions. And these are the vertical parts of the sled that go up to our handlebar. Now the stanchions not only support the bed, and support all the weight of everything you're carrying here in the sled, but they also um, are what steers the sled. So they go up to the handlebar. I call this a handlebar. Some people call it a riding bow or a handle bow. Um, it's all the same thing. But when I move the handlebar back and forth, it moves the stanchions, which then connect to the runners and it steers the sled. So if I want to go to the left, I'll pull my handlebar over to the left. If I want to go to the right, I'll pull my handlebar over to the right. And it steers my sled down the trail as I go around trees and rocks and jumble ice and things. Um, another really important part of this dog sled is what's called the brush bow. And this part here is kind of like a bumper on a car. So if we were coming up at a tree and I can't miss the tree, I'm going to bump into the tree, this thing protects my sled. It kind of flexes, it's shaped in a, in a way that when I hit it, it deflects my sled off the tree and hopefully keeps my sled from breaking. So we call this the brush bow. It's a very important part of the sled. Um, along with the runner, most racing sleds have the ability now to change what we call the runner plastic. So we have a metal runner, aluminum runner, and that is the, the structural component. Some sleds use a wood runner, some have like a carbon fiber runner. Um, it's all the same idea. There's, there's this thing that's like a ski. And then on the bottom we have basically essentially what what's on the bottom of your ski, say a ski wax, um, the runner plastic acts as the lubricated part that slides on the snow. And so um, if you're a cross-country skier, you would know that if you want to ski at different temperatures, you change the wax for different temperatures of snow. Um, well, we can do that by changing the color of plastic. And we just pull a pin here on the sled, and we can slide that plastic right out of the screw on the trail quick, and then we can get another color of plastic for that temperature. Slide it back in here quick. Put our pin back in here quick. And then get back on the trail before the next racer comes. And so that's how we change our runner plastic on the trail. Sometimes on the trail rocks will catch our plastic and rip it off. So we always carry extra runner plastic in our sled to make sure that uh, we can put more plastic on and slide easy down the trail. Now down here on the bottom of the sled, um, another really important part is what's called the bridle. And the bridle is the rope that attaches the sled to the dog team. Without a bridle, there's no way you can get down the trail. So the bridle comes off the front of the sled and is attached to what we call the gang line. And that attaches to the dogs. So the bridle comes off the bottom and attaches to the stanchions and then pulls all your weight down the trail. Now in order to drive the sled with 16 crazy Iditarod dogs attached, we also need to be able to control them. So we do that by voice commands, but we also do that with some of the features of the sled. So we have two braking mechanisms on a racing sled. We have what's known as a claw brake or bar brake right here and we push down on that as we say whoa or easy and we're able to slow down the dogs or stop them if we really have to we'll stand up with both feet lift up the handlebars and we can stop the team and then once they're stopped we have what's called the snow hook and we put that in the snow stomp it down in there and then the dog can't go anywhere they can't pull that out of the snow most of the time so that's how we stop the team and hold them. Now if we just want to go a little bit slower but not stop them, then we use what's called the drag pad or the drag mat. And it's actually a piece of snow machine tread 
and sometimes we have spikes in it for ice to help slow us down. And so we'll drop that down onto the ground and we'll apply some weight from our body, which applies friction to the trail and slows the dogs down. So with that combined with the brake, we can stop the team, slow them down, control the speed, and keep them at a nice safe speed on the trail. Um, this part here, next to the drag mat, is what's called the footboard. And you can see it's a little rubber pad with little knobbies on it. This is what we stand on. It's kind of the, uh, the cushioned, uh, I don't know what, you, what I'm trying to say there, but <laughs> this is where we stand. Um, so it's cushioned, it's knobby, it keeps our feet on there good. Um, kind of insulates our feet from the cold as well um, and, and helps us have good traction on the sled so if we're driving down the trail we don't fall off and get hurt. Um, a lot of the sleds these days you'll see have what this thing back here, they call this a tail dragger seat. So this actually allows me to carry more stuff on the trail in my sled but it also allows me to rest a little bit. Um, it's hard to drive the sled while you're sitting, but on really flat trails, like on the Yukon Quest, we're on the Yukon River a bunch. I was able to sit down and relax a little bit. You can kind of get behind your sled out of the wind. Um, and it allows me to get in my little bag here and get out some, take some hand warmers or something and do some work while, while the dogs are running on a nice flat trail. So it allows the musher to get a little more rest because you can relax your back, relax your body. And so you get a little more rest on the trail then you, get, you can uh, get more uh, accomplished at the checkpoint taking care of your dogs. And so it's a very helpful item. And most of us carry, let's say our cooler, our bucket in there that we keep our dog food in. And then we just sit on that. <laughs> And then this one has a little shelf on the back. I can hang my straw in there for camping or whatever I want to put back there. Now, another thing that you'll see a lot and I did about these days, is just kind of a newer thing, um, is the use of a caboose trailer. And so this is a trailer um, that my wife Paige used last year and I did a rod. And it clips onto the back of the sled right there. Without the clip on the sled, but that's where it goes. And we're able to haul dogs in here. So if you have a dog that's tired or a dog that's sore muscles, um, we can put them in here, they can rest for a while. Um, and then that way, if, if, if they get a little more rest, they can usually get back in the team. Or if they just need to go to the checkpoint and get dropped, they have a nice safe ride. It's basically like a dog kennel. You open that up, they hop in there, go for a little ride down the trail, and a nice safe warm place for dogs to rest while you're going down the trail. And it pulls behind the sled real nice. Um, yeah, I guess the only other thing here that I didn't talk about is an essential part of the sled is actually a couple of things, but the bed. So on most of the racing sleds these days, we use uh, UHMW plastic as the bed. Some of the older style sleds were wood slats that ran along the length of the sled. Um, but this acts as like, say, your, your normal sled that you'd go riding down the hill on. It's nice and smooth. If you hit trees or stumps or snow, it just slides on there real easy um, and that supports all of the weight that's in what's called the sled bag and so the sled bag is also another thing that is very important um, it's good to have a good sled bag you can cinch down all your gear it attaches to the sled and keeps everything in there so if you tip over fall over everything stays with the sled um, you can have the dividers in there and pockets and things you can keep all your gear um, situated and organized nicely and this sled bag has a special little pocket mounted on top and this is for the GPS trackers. So during the race, we have spot trackers on the sled and I don't have one here with me, but it goes right in there, gets velcroed in, and then when I'm going down the trail, you can watch me on a Diderot Insider. And you'll see this thing up on front during races. They give us a race bib. This was from this week's Yukon Quest, but they'll have a number on our sled. And then sometimes you'll see all these patches and things on the side. These are sponsor patches. Sponsors help us in the races, help us um, get to the race, help us pay for some of the things that we need in order to race. And so we like to pay them back by showing them off on the trail. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, once again, I'm Cody from Scoot Acres Kennel Fairbanks. Follow us on Facebook and uh, scootacres.com. Thanks.